In this course, we're going to be talking about one of the most important parts of Angular 2, and that is the HTTP library that Angular 2 ships with. Now, when we're building out these JavaScript applications, especially with Angular 2, a lot of our data is going to come from an external API. The HTTP library is going to be how we can get all of that information out of some external API, no matter what we want to hit, be it our own backend service that we created ourselves, our RESTful API. We could also hit a social API like Facebook, GitHub, Twitter, something like that. But all of it is going to stem from using the Angular 2 HTTP library. Now there's a couple concepts here in the HTTP library for Angular 2 that are going to be a little different than how Angular 1 dealt with things. The Angular 2 HTTP library uses observables. Now this is going to be seen as a step above promises and it gives us a little bit more flexibility and a few more features when we're working with data. We're going to be talking about observables and how we can use them and why we want to use them in the next lesson. Right now, let's go ahead and set up our application so that we can start working and getting used to the Angular 2 HTTP library. Now, building an API, a RESTful API, is going to be something that we're going to deal with in a future course, and it's out of the scope of what our course does right now. We want to use the library for HTTP to get data. We don't really want to build that whole backend service to give us the data. We're going to use this website here called Rec res.in and what they do is they just give us a really quick fake API that we're going to be able to hit with our HTTP library and treat it like we would a real API. If we scroll down here at recres.in, we can go down and we can see all of the different things that this API provides us. We're going to use this list users where we use the get call and once we do that we'll get data and there's three users here and we'll use all those and then we can have get a single user, we can have an edit and create and update. So we're going to play with all these with our own HTTP application. To get us started, we're going to use the Angular 2 starter that we built in the Getting Started with Angular 2 course. Go ahead, visit this page, we'll have that link in the notes, copy the SSH URL. We're going to create git clone and we'll clone it into a new folder called Angular 2 HTTP. We're going to cd into Angular 2 HTTP. And in this lesson, I know in the previous courses we've used Sublime Text. I'm going to switch it up a little bit and use Visual Studio Code. I think it provides a little bit more IntelliSense and gives us a little more features and type hinting. So I'm just trying it out. Uh, this is one of my very first times using Visual Studio Code over Sublime Text. So this will be a fun experiment to try out a new editor and see how it fares against our Sublime Text that we've been using. Let's open this up in Visual Studio Code. Now we have everything for our application here. Let's go ahead and run npm install and then we'll have it run npm start when that's done. All right. We have our application running in the browser. All we have to do is grab the HTTP library. We'll go into app module. We're going to import the HTTP module from Angular HTTP. And let's bring that into the imports. And you know what, while we're here, we're going to use the forms module. Let's import that now. And this will give us a little bit of that ng model two way data binding that we'll use for forms. And let's break out the declarations because we will be using those. One last thing that we're going to be doing for our application here we're going to create a new folder called shared, a new folder inside of that called models. And we'll just create a user class so that we can use that across our application. We're going to be listing users, creating and updating users. It makes sense to have a user model so that we know what a user object looks like. And here we're going to export class user. And the user is going to have an ID, which is a number, a name, which is a string, 
And let's go look at our API because this is how we're going to start using things. If we look, we have an ID, a first name, last name, and an avatar. So actually, we need to change this to first name, last name, and avatar. That will be good enough to set up the base for our application. We have gone ahead and imported the HTTP module so that our entire application can use it. We've gone ahead and imported the forms module so that we can use two-way data binding. And we also have this user class that we can use across all of our components so that we know what a user looks like. That's good for the setup. Let's start moving forward. We'll talk about observables and then start using them in our application.